Ja kehati aati ilta kati uhon. Ja yag yakhana kwashwe kuti. Ma data ya yukha kaktitla aat. Ha gudesa, gudaksa, gunaksa, jatla kata dweta yak. Baka awe yak tewasaku kwashwe taak ashkashni ki aya wuchin kaktu tu ki nak. Ye awa kanak katlan aya lengkiti ghetang ki chaak roe. Yes, Kakartu ak hayukatangit at Tilayehi. Aka away kakwati, hadaye has your tea. Wasa achtu yak a yak a tea. Kahasha ye the hain ye su. Asha ye the hain ye su. Ye away yak a at the yashing git your katangi. Hat hai suck a ya sati hayukatangi. Chu ya. Ya Kanakhawe has as a eel the catastrophe yer a nach. Ya hag Hashagoon, Hashuka. Has to to us go in the dark plain, a ya hea gartirini, a joy kukwati. Joy has the hea reas kukwati, a yakayat. Ye away her gursaner. Ye away her gursaner, ye think it on a reg. Ech akut yu khatangi tin yu gakhti tlaak yaag. Ya hak eda khaag u deki na suuz gan. Qunna na. Yel ta kat has qunna khawi wi shu kat khu u ha tu wasagu has tsu has ya wa tlaaki. Ya ha has tu yu khatangi. Ya tliyat ke au has u wa te. Yu te khand yu tkha jin kat kha ke jin au wa adat ki. At Gitayir. A schoon clan has a lehin. There to Saku has to Tawasaku Hatawu Aya a duck has our sadly. Aho ah, Hanak has our let's eggly. Was a hat to woo your nick on Ganins. Ya to Saku Ishan Dane has cow a shuka uhansu. To nick a ya, which a teach. Ya had a yeti one canins. A joy how you a tongue ye hoa, knock the tea. Kitsin in knock a ya. Ye a wet, got a day na ya, at rachel a yer, wooch in. A kusahantin. A car away. To a kaya ye got to sunny. Ya has to kagi, yes, I yaka gachter ark. Utusaku was a hasakawa ark. Gash the katakusti, oe a has shoot a he. Kesha dekoa. Taik ha a yer sati. It cut kitunach a ya. Kena saha yer a tongi. Gosh ya nadai heen ya he iti. Yeah, we can get it. 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 Yeah, we we can get it. Yeah, a joy eke quati. Taki ah hit the way up to us a goo. A joy yet a yer so car. Ya one can mean so that you took the tongue. One of so it eke day near she in the end. Kirk ne hoi nak. Shadang, cock one ish. Shakshani, a chquay, a train ah. Kanahoe has to tow us a goo. To the naki, Yahayuka tongue teen. Yea, away, yea, that 
in a teach a thing it crusty thing it on a car it at the clock away see you darkness tunch with us a coup yeah it could get a you has a sock click park enough yet a yahoo how you got tongue it Yakatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikatkikat
scram. Oh. And uh oh. oh now what it really means. Some of the uh <laughs> teachers. <laughs> Sheesh. Some of the teachers who are working with little kids that say chucky took. And so we would be like, whoa. <laughs> They're just laughing, you know, laughing with the kids like, uh, yeah, there's, there's all, and so there's a bunch of these things that are real small um, phrases. Um, and then there's this little song that they made, I think in um, so obviously taken like a melody so to cut you on all of you chadasa whatever doc yeesene you got out kidane kai chuck put it away so it's real important like you know working with kids all the time um so there's a, a couple of phrases that are important in there um kidane is to do something well kai chuck is a command for stack it pack it uh, it, it could mean all kinds, like if you're packing clothes, packing a bag, putting something back in a box, uh, stacking up some uh, firewood. Um, then there's another verb, which is yenasne, um, which is a command form for do it. It just means do it. But we, we usually know what the thing is. But if you are sort of saying, if you put something on there like nadak ye nasne, do the table, you're usually saying either clean it up or set it. Um, and then you can also say itika uh, ye nasne. And then literally you're saying do your room. But you're really saying, because um, it also means fix it, right? Fix up your room is really what you're saying. So what you're telling people is to, clean up the thing so ye nasne is for one person and you could also say yan nasne which would mean get it ready so you get your company coming over everybody's vaccinated you're gonna have a big party with your vaccinated friends yay yohan yan nasne we na dog ha hunk yan ha hiti de has yan uh, everybody get the table ready your friends are coming over um so yeah these are good phrases to have like household phrases things to say with people uh which includes you know scram put it away you know, there's a whole bunch of commands that are really good to know but then it's good to know that you know you can't do it all with commands because what if grandma's there you're not gonna tell grandma what to do we're gonna have to kick you out you know but you know that's when the, those aren't commands, but those are those become like questions or hortatives. Uh, let me help you. Uh, let me do something for you. Uh, what do you need? What do you want? You know, and so a whole bunch of these things for day to day communication. A lot of these are in a book called Tlingit Khinaksa. I see a link for it there. Uh, there's another uh, document. Let me find this one for you. I'll put... I'm trying to update some of the links. So basically, I've been running this blog for about six or seven years, clinkitlanguage.com. And I used to upload everything directly to the blog. And then there's a link to it. But then I'm finding an easier way to do it these days is to put everything into a Google folder and then to just because then if I update the document, it just it automatically the link doesn't need to refresh or anything because I'd have six, seven versions of a dictionary on that thing. I get 
I get myself confused real easy. Um, so there's this text. Um, and maybe we'll take a look at that for a bit. Uh, and we'll talk about, uh, here's another link to that one. And then there's one more. Let's see, where did, I gotta find where I put this one. So there was another book that we were working on, and this one's incomplete. Um, and this second link is um, language for the home. So the idea with this one was we sort of listed out, we made sure we had names for all the rooms in a house. And then we have a bunch of phrases that would be like, here's kitchen phrases, here's bathroom phrases, here's, you know, whatever. And, and so um, the mud room or, or, you know, whatever the front porch, then you've got like, take your jacket off, put your jacket on, a bunch of things like that. And so uh, probably over the course of the summer, we're going to work on trying to finalize that one. And then the phrase book was, uh, that was a game changer when that one came out. I don't know if you guys, those of you who've been doing this for a while, still trying to figure out what to call everybody. Grizzled. Yeah, the, the grizzled, uh, sees the, the finely seasoned uh, veterans of setting Klingit. Y'all remember when this book came out? 2002, All right? Yes. So I think we did Glacier Bay in maybe 2001. I don't, feel, I don't remember all the details. But I think we were in Glacier Bay for a Tlingit immersion before this book came out. No, that, it was after. It was after? So this had already come out? OK. Yeah, it was either three or four for Glacier Bay. I think three. OK. You OK? 2003. OK, so, so this had just come out the year before. OK. Sheesh. Uh, so here. Basically, what you have is uh, as you go through, let me make sure the chat is open. Uh, yeah, so hang up your coat. Gulchish. I'll go see it. Yeah, Gulchish. We might have to put that one in there. Uh, so, as far as what you have, you have um, just some general conversational things for talking, greetings, departures, visiting. Uh, some commands for school, camp, home, uh, compliments include, I think they're stuck together at the mouth already is, is in here. Um, months, seasons, days, time references, uh, they do vary from place to place. So whatever you see with the months in here, um, you might have some different uh, levels here. Yeah, so maybe, sorry, I was catching the chat. So maybe, the beginners could be, well, I gotta be careful uh, because, yeah, I like, the, I like the concept of going from shallow water to deep water. We, we don't wanna say people are on the beach because that can be an insult sometimes. Um, okay, uh, introducing oneself, personal phrases, living places, health and medical, feelings, cooking and talking about food, kinship, reporting news, giving messages, uh, ceremonial and public speaking, coming and going, location and direction, sizes and shapes, colors, numbers and counting, weather, and a whole series of commands. So um, this is just such a wonderful text. And then there is a CD that came out um, which isn't line for line, but it has a lot of these phrases in there and maybe some other ones that aren't in here. Um, this is all the work of this text was uh, and then the audio was uh, and um, yeah, Hinyik would be Maybe he would be the the people in the shallow water, and then the um, 
Hintakku be the people in the water, in the deeper water, and then the Itkaku would be the people in the halibut hole. So that those could be maybe the the deep water people. So <laughs> okay, and then uh, okay. So think it ach. Hold on a second. I got the audio somewhere. Let me let me a second. I'll find it. Oh yeah, caught in the undertow. Uh, oh, okay, sorry, I'm not. Uh, I'm not putting the titles of everything in the chat. I'll try and make sure that I do that um, when I post this recording. But we'll see. I'm falling behind on everything. So, uh, but there's the audio for Klingit um, Chinach uh, Ach. And let me let's see. Since you guys are well, let's see what else we need. Oh, in the eddies or the tide rips. Okay, yeah. So, well, we can all be the people in the whirlpool. Um, although, you know, it's a little bit. It get it does get chaotic. Right? Learning and using the language, and then being in between Shinget and English all the time. The more you do this stuff, it's it gets really fun, I think. But then there's a whole bunch of things that you end up just can't think about. So there's some things like if we look at location and direction, for example, we see things like uh, gusu we, where is that? So gusu we gao, gusu we kuk. Um, and then you've got some answers to that. Where are people? They're upstairs, they're at home, they're at school. Um, isn't your mother upstairs? Kesh ake hitchantu ikla. So, uh, ge or, or age is how you turn that statement into a yes or no question. And you can also go kesh age, and that's how you say, isn't it? And for those of you who are in the halibut hole, um, there is a phrase, like a verb form, that I'm sure a lot of you know. Kesh ade potayiye can't sleep like we were talking about this one yesterday right maybe it was yesterday maybe it was some other day you can use if you're raven especially you could turn those into a question so it would get pretty wild but you could say something like can you not sleep and so raven used this for is there any could you not trade me that octopus tentacle for this uh, bow and arrow? It was a pretty complicated phrase that he said to that the person who had that tentacle staff. Okay, uh, so yeah, there's a whole bunch of this stuff. And then you go over and then they start getting into con concepts like in the boat, on the mountain, all of these are ending with this u uh, or w suffix. So that means to be at a place. So you could say yigu, shakiwu, hanu, uh, tawu, or tagu, tagu, um, tayiwu, uh, neishu, shkunu. You see a whole bunch of these. They're usually not tied to any verbs. They're just saying it is there. It's at that place. It's at this place. It's on this. It's over that. Um, yeah. And then it, they go on. They got like left, right. These are different in Teslin. Tzadach uh, is left. Shinach is right. Uh, but if you're in Teslin, Tzadach is left. Qinach is right. Um, High place, low place. So they've just got, they've got a few of these. As they were, they did this, then they're working on intermediate clinket, um, which I have the text for that in its latest version. Um, 
And then I was working on intermediate clinket, and then basically it started to sort of move in a different direction. So I had a conversation with Khayinak Richard Dauenhauer, and we decided it should become its own thing. And it was started out as a book called Understanding the Clinket Verb, and then um, and then it changed into Hausanei Khayuchatangi um, when I heard. Uh, that phrase. There were some things I talked about um, at the beginning of class today. Uh, just, I think, some important concepts that I wanted to translate um, was that the the language is in your hands, and, and I, I think it's a good thing. I think that you all collectively bring strength. You all collectively bring a lot of possibility in terms of what's going to happen. Um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I do believe that people will be speaking Tlingit generations from now. And I think they'll be doing so um, in easier situations than a lot of us might have. Uh, and, and so our goal is to just make sure it, it gets to them and that it gets stronger within us. And as it gets stronger within us, we just keep using it. I, I think you got to just keep using it. You got to crash through those times where you're frustrated and people might not understand you and it might sound kind of strange and you might be using the wrong pronouns, but we got to get beyond that and get to the point of just being able to use it. Because as long as we focus on the communication part, I think the other parts are going to come. Uh, they told us a long time ago that it's like we're just beginning. There's this verb, uh, is the verb root. And it means like to just push something so it nudges. And they, they use that. Uh, I think tomorrow we'll take a look at some of the speeches in, uh, maybe tonight, we'll see how everybody feels. Some of the speeches in um, Because We Cherish You. Because that's what they're talking about, this box of wisdom. Yakutsuki, um, or the Yakutsuki and how it's like we're just nudging the lid and we're just starting to peek inside and get a glimpse of the way our ancient people used to do things. Uh, because it's wild, like we could do this, you do this stuff for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. And you're just gonna, it's like you can only just get a peek at the way the ancient people used to think. It's, it's incredible, it's incredible the amount of information and complexity that's contained within Shinget. Then you're going to see all these people walk around like, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but they just walk around like zombies. They have no idea that this is a whole other thing right here. It's just so amazing. It's just so, uh, has so much depth to it. Um, okay. Thoughts, questions, things you've been thinking about in our last two days of lesson and sharing. Again, to reiterate, Friday, I'm hoping you all will just share something. And let's let's try, I think we should try this. Everybody share something in Shingit. Um, try, I don't wanna do sort of long speeches in English about Shingit, but just do as much as you can. And it's okay if you're reading it off a piece of paper. It should be something kinda your original thoughts, hopefully. Not like, let me read you this story, which I think is great. I think it's great. And there's no grade, there's no, there's no nothing that's affiliated with that. Nobody's judging anybody. Um, but we'll start with the uh, the the people of the shallow waters. Then we'll move to the deeper waters and the deeper waters. And we'll, the folks who've been doing this the longest and feel like they're they're sort of down in the depths of it, maybe be the, the ones who will be speaking, kind of last. So that's what we'll do on Friday. So today and tomorrow, we'll do our last sets of lessons. And this stuff, it, it never ends. It never ends. It's just sort of like, okay, we're done with this part. We'll do the other thing later. Right? So thoughts, questions, things you've been thinking about. I have a recommendation for um, learners and actually any level 
It's the um, Hear It in Tlingit, the CD that Johnny and Carrie did. It is so good for learning. And you can just listen and listen and listen. And each time you'll say, hey, wait, I didn't even remember that one. And so you'll be learning. Um, um, and I had it, I have it on my computer, but it there's something weird about it. It 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 won't advance to the next track. Hmm. So Matthew, our young um, learner and teacher from Harvard fixed it. So now I have it on my phone so it does advance. But it was kind of tricky. He and um, Kashka worked on it. But it's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful CD. I think 265 phrases. Okay. Yeah, and so just thinking of more ways to get some of those. I mean, I mean, listening to the recordings and sometimes doing some of those kind of bite-sized pieces, like here's a phrase, here's how to say it, here's a phrase, here's how to say it, and then mixing that up with some of the bigger things. Like you could download the recording of talk, uh, um, and then you can, that's the mosquito story, and then you can listen to it, and you can read it. And then you can listen to it and read it. And then you can listen to it, pause, try to say it exactly like Shah Dog. And then you can take the story and you can translate it yourself. Like here's the here's the English, here's the Shingit, there's the English. Can you get there? Um and, and going back to Yen Kati and Yen uh, those are the same thing. Um most people would say Yen Kati. But I hear people say, Ye nakati. It's uh, the contraction, I would expect it to be there. So, nakati, uh, Ye nakati is let it be that way. Or, yeah, may it be so. Okay, any other questions, thoughts, suggestions, requests? Washington, D.C., Take uh, Hat, um, uh, why I missed yesterday. Ah, oh, okay. Sheesh. Yeah, and we recorded on third, I think last Thursday and Friday too. So I'll try and post them all tonight so if you can catch up. Um, okay. Sheesh. Okay. Oh, can you teach sing it radio? Okay. okay. Anything else? Questions, thoughts, things to share? Anybody look up any place names that you want to talk about? I was looking at the. Uh, oh, go ahead. You go. I was looking at. Uh, I found a good map with La Perouse, uh, the Kashke hit for, you know, the platform house on the, on the, wow. the Tuya Bay Islands. And I found a La Perouse recreation of a, the map that he had. So I got some for all my family and they're going to get them framed. So <laughs> mine's the biggest one though. And <laughs> the rest are going to be a uh, nice present. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Um, I found one Khatgutu An. So the Gutu. So I put it in the chat. Khatgutu An. It's apparently inside Icy Point um, oh. near Huna. Okay. And the Khat. Um, comes from the, the spruce roots and then it's I guess the gutu would be the inside part or the nestling okay. 
Okay, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up now. Hold on one second. Okay, sure. And what was the English name that they had for that? Um, in, in the Thornton database, it just said inside icy point. So it's, um, I think it's not a current place name. Okay, yeah, I see it. <laughs> Need the chat. Uh, oh, there it is, yeah. It didn't show up right away, so. Okay. So chat is uh, a spruce root. Um, gutu is a really cool, it's inside of a stump of something. Um, and then on is the village. So that's what you say, like, askutu or atkutu for the forest. And so, um, okay. yeah, in this atlas, there's, there's tons, so many different names in here. And so like the more you sort of just go through this, like in the, so we see above it, um, khatu. So here's gutu and tu. So that tu is inside of something. So we're gonna see that all over the place. The other thing that we're gonna see in here that we'll talk about before um, we're done here with our workshop is sometimes you're gonna see this letter I that pops up. So you go from heen to heeny, on, ani. So that's that's usually a relational marker. So it's marking either possession or some sort of relationship. And so this is something that's, it does happen in Tlingit. And so you're gonna see some of these things. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that just have heeny on them. And some of those have made it over into English. Like you'll, you'll hear Heaney in different places when you sort of go through. Um, uh, we got another one. Let's see if I could find it. So here we go. So in this case, um, there's two parts to this. So Sha Nach is a valley and so the the nach part is in there which is um uh, on its own it's a suffix that means to go through or to go along but i think if we talk about landscapes it has another meaning as well which i think means something that has these two sort of sides to it nach on its own is in a whole bunch of clan names so you hear these nach adi, nach adi, a whole bunch. And I think that nach is like a, a bay with kind of narrow sides to it, like a fjord is what it might be called in other languages. I mean, that, that's used in English, right? But that's from a different language. Um, itch is a verb root, which means to sparkle. Um, it's also the name for glass. So itch is, so you say like itch tu khat is a name that's sometimes used for jarred salmon because it's in a glass, it's in a glass jar. Um, so the itji is like, it sparkles. So there's this other suffix that could go right on here that's very similar. Uh, it looks very much like a possessive or relational suffix, but it stays low and it's what we call the attributive. So you put it onto a verb and it means, it turns the verb into basically an adjective. So you could say itch, it sparkles, or cuddly itch is usually how you'd say it. But then itchy would be like sparkly. So I would, so we have it here as sparkling uh, valley. But yeah, it could also, it could be glass, right? I have a question about that. So, oh. um, so I was talking to an elder, which was really fun um, over the weekend because he was in Clinket and talking to him in Clinket and he was trying to talk to me about Mount Roberts and 
the way that it was called. I noticed in here, it talks about the trails at the top of Mount Roberts, but I didn't, um, you know, on Mount Roberts, but it doesn't have Mount Roberts. And he was talking about that word, that, uh, what it was called, and I actually um, have him taped, but um, he, he was talking about how Mount Roberts was um, the term that, because it was sparkling like crystal, and that's what they called it, was um, this crystal mountain. It was almost like crystal, like a chandelier. Before the trees were there, it was more like marble before the trees came up on Mount Roberts. And, um, and that's what he said that they called it. And so he asked, he was talking to me because he was asking me to ask Goldbelt to start calling it by that name rather than Mount Roberts Tram. Okay. And so there, there's a few things, like when we look at place names, one is like, there's a few of them where the exact placement of it might actually be a little bit off. Um, and, and these are some things that we've been sort of trying, that the, the group that's living there tries to figure it out. And then sometimes we've got to figure out like, oh, that's the name for this thing. And then this other thing has this other name. And then there's a, a bunch that, so this, this text, this book has like over 3,000 names, but it's just scratching the surface. The, the sad reality is there's a whole bunch of names that were probably lost. But then there's probably two thirds of the names they decided not to publish for, two, for probably two main reasons. One is if it gives a hint that there's an icht there, a medicine person, someone will go dig them up. And so we have to protect them. The other thing is uh, some of them uh, have some concepts that might be embarrassing in English. And I'll tell you how I got in trouble one time. I was at a meeting and people were talking about place names. And there was a, a bit of a backstory. I was flying to Metlakatla, I was invited down there. And I was sitting next to someone who was pointing at Prince of Wales. We're in the plane. This is years ago. And he's like, I used to log there as Haida Gwaii. And I said, no, because that's Petersburg. That's Prince of Wales. He's like, it's Haida Gwaii. He used to live there. I was like, okay. You know, but he was wrong. He was wrong. But then I sort of started looking around. I was like, hey, I should open up this place name thing, which is on my phone. And uh, just look up some names of things as we fly over them. So I don't have to think about this person tell me which island is which, right? So then I looked down and there was a place called um, And so uh, I'll tell you what it means in a second. Some of you might know. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And so uh, I just, I had, I kept it in my mind just because I thought it was kind of funny and kind of interesting. Flash forward to months and months later, I'm at a meeting and people are talking about this place name project. And someone says, well, we, we didn't publish all the names because some of them might be a little, I guess, embarrassing to people. I said, oh, like Tukheta Usk. And there's only like one or two people that understood Tlingit and they kind of giggled. And then later someone else, uh, stood up and said, well, some people think some of these names are dirty. And then unfortunately that opened the door. And when the door was open, I had to walk through it because I, I was taught by a lot of my uncles who like to make jokes at bad times. And I don't know, maybe it was a good time. I thought it was funny. But I said, well, earlier I said the name Tukhidusk, which is a place near Petersburg. It means washing the anus. And that's actually a pretty clean name. And so I got a death glare from somebody and that glare told me, stop with the jokes. <laughs> so, but I didn't, I didn't name that place. And so a uh, tuk and a tuk has a khe, a tuk is a but and a khe is an opening. And then duusk is uh, people are washing. So uh, there's a place name for you. It does exist, but there's there's a whole bunch more too. That sometimes there's names that are like not all the time, um, and then but there's a bunch that also aren't. 
documented here. So um, uh, Cecilia Kunz, she, she shared a bunch of names with people and, and Maria Olson, she knows a bunch of them. And, and luckily they've been written down. Chukanani is the name of uh, this grassy area um, in between Juneau and Douglas, just south of the airport. People like to go walk their dogs and hunt ducks there. Um, there's a place in between um, in between Juneau and Douglas, there's this narrow strip of water that don't bring your boat there at li low tide, but high tide you go up there. Um, and that place is called Sitka. There's a whole bunch of Sitka uh, all over the place. That means on the channel or on the gully. Uh, every, most villages have Katini nearby, which is Sakai River. And they also have Gunhini, which is a spring of water. Uh, so these are sort of the requirements for villages to have. Um, but with place names, the other thing is sometimes there's, like if you look at this one, it says, that's what it is. That's where taku comes from. Uh, it says here, flood of geese. That's what Nora told me. But then uh, I heard from someone else that if you have ta, which is a king salmon, and ku, which is a cove, you put them together and you're going to get ta ku. And I could see the way that Shingit usually functions when you make compound nouns. I could see it there. So I think that one, it makes sense to me. But then sometimes you're going to have multiple interpretations of a particular name. One of my uncles, I won't say which one, used to always say Skagway comes from Shkukwe, which is the sound of somebody peeing on a rock. And I never could figure out how he got there. But I also so was like, is it and so but then i and, and your relationship with these place names are probably going to change over time whether it's oh okay that's oh i, I think i'm getting it now zanti is the name of the hill and ke is the base and zanti kehini is that river at the base of zanti and then sometimes you're going to sort of change your understanding of the interpretation of it and sometimes there might be multiple because with place names, they can also get really contracted in a bunch. It could be tied to some big story or some other thing like that. So then I used to think, well, Shkukwe is the name for Skagway. I think it's roughed up water. It seems to make sense. Someone told me Shkuk is like a white cap. I could never figure out how that worked. But then uh, Chachi Will Geiger was listening to a recording of Mildred Sparks and she said, it comes from Wushikakuye, the place that has the hard wooded trees. I was like, I could see how that works. I could see how the language works. So then I have to change it. And, you know, I'm from there and I've done a bunch of work and I have roughed up water on a whole bunch of signs that I help make. And I'm like, well, I guess the next version of those signs going to have to change. So it's it's interesting to sort of to, to go through these and to look at them. Your language journey is a, a long journey with lots of twists and turns. And I think you'll always do yourself a, a favor if you do less of the right and wrong thing and more of the depth of meaning thing. And also sort of saying like, these names have been here for thousands of years. Some of them are really straightforward. Deshu. That's really straightforward. But then also, so this one, Sayek. Um, I've also been in meetings where like, some will get real upset. They're like, people are mad because we're, we're putting the names back on the land. But it's easy to say, Sayek. I was like, oops, you said it wrong. <laughs> you know, but yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Less of right and wrong, more of just fine tuning sometimes. So the sa is a really interesting part of Shingit. You're going to hear it all the time. Sakuni, uh, You're going to hear this in a whole bunch of verbs and a whole bunch of names. This first part, sa, is related, I think, to a whole bunch of different things. It's a body part right here, base of the neck. It's a voice, sa. It's also a verb root, sa. 
that verb root has a whole bunch of verbs that are all connected to breathing, the seuk, life, the seuk, to name something, uwasa, to be called something, yuchatuwasaku. All those things are in there. I was listening to a recording of uh, Ken Austin, who was talking about this. He says, well, once you get a name, now you can breathe. Now you got life. And, and he was tying them all together and resting, running out of breath. All these things, they're, they're all connected to this sa, which sometimes is a voice. Yake is a spirit helper. Uh, yake is usually uh, the thing. Uh, so in Tlingit Tunditani, when uh, things move on from this world, sometimes they come back and they're reincarnated. Sometimes they go to Dachankru, the, the happy beyond. And sometimes they stay here to help people. The Yaik were the ones who would help the medicine people. So Sayyik is uh, what that one is. Anachya uh, Andaganye. Um, the place where the sun shines, right? And so really cool, like really amazing. I saw that one in there too. It runs itself murky. Uh, the river that runs itself clean. So those are two related concepts as well with murky water and clean water. In the murky water, you have which could mean like two things. Like it could mean silty. And it could also mean like uh, this, especially the herring are spawning or the salmon are spawning. Oh, you okay. Can I just uh, share one other one with you? Can I? Uh, so it's one that um, Flagoon uses uh, in that uh, video I was working on. And I, I could, she says about three times, I couldn't figure out what she was saying, eh? And it's uh, ak -ak 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 And it's the, um, I'll, I'll play her saying it, uh, just so you get it right. But uh, uh, Kay, she said, it's the old name for Teslin, eh? Oh, but it, it's, it's not um, all of Teslin. It's, it's the old part of Teslin that's along the, the edge of that hill, the brink of that hill. So uh, uh, is um, along the edge or the, the brink of something. Eh? Oh, yeah. And uh, so I'll just play her saying it uh, really quick. Eh? Um, but uh, just so you, but. So uh, So. Uh, she's she's talking about why she doesn't go or why she how difficult it was for her to go to Teslin because so many people were gone eh? the the people that she grew up with eh? but uh, is um, how she's saying it eh? and it uh, I just thought um, Yada Chun would probably know exactly. I, I mean, I can picture it there. I'm not sure how to explain it, but it's that old part along the. You can help me out or not, Yada Chun. It, it's up to you, but you know where I'm talking about, eh? Those houses along the, the edge of that hill back there, right? Eh? Uh, anyways, I'll, yeah, I'll leave it at that. But uh, I thought, yeah, just such a neat uh, name and. Uh, like a real old name as well. Well, I was looking through. Uh, so here is um, a story from Shada, uh, Shada, and so uh, he's he's talking about some stuff in here, and he says, uh, "So it's uh, is uh, clay, uh, is a point, heen." It's the river, uh, and then Sha is the mountain. Uh, and then a bunch of things can have a kha, like your nose, kha, 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 tip of your tongue. Um, you do a sock, a shakiwu, 
Ah, Yahu, Kayatik. So he's talking about during the flood. And during the flood, people lived on the mountaintops. And they would tie their the boats onto the mountain, these big rocks onto the mountain. Uh, and then where did I, I saw this? Is it there? I might have lost it. But I, I thought of this because he was he uses this word, the same word. Um, ah, where'd it go? Kaka. So the part is the mouth or an opening. And what's really wild, like, again, we're going to enter in some of these conceptual sort of whirlpools sometimes, right? So you have a mouth, uh, but you also have a here and a in other places. It's just an opening. Uh, and so is uh, the opening hole, and that's the name for a doorway. And is on the opening is literally what it means and what's really wild is a body of water has right and so it could be you're getting right up to the lip of the water and it could be you're you're also getting right on the surface of the water so like in shingit you got to think about this stuff because uh, you could be on the surface of the water you could be right at the edge along the along the opening is really what it means Aka is aka on the opening of it so like conceptually you can really get some really neat things going on it's like you're just sort of standing at a doorway is almost what it sounds like to me okay oh here it is at the entrance of tsagwa and so he's using it um, right here, you know, and so it was neat um, to sort of and, and to see how these things link together sometimes. And then when you start listening to a speaker and you hear how they talk about it and use it, it's really fascinating. Uh, Let's take a break. If if I miss anything that you wanted to talk about, we could talk about it after our break. I think we'll um, go back and we'll look at a few more things with direction and location, and we'll start looking at talk. Uh, and I'll show you folks um, one way to do a, a close grammar reading of a story. Okay, Chish, uh, come back in ten minutes.
כן, זה 10 minutes. איך עושה כאן? קצ'יש. אוקיי. Any questions or anything? Things you think about? I thought it was interesting on Gartini for Gartini, Gartina and Huna, since it's primarily a uh, sockeye, or it's primarily a dog salmon river. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And there's lots of Tichkeen. So Tichkeen and Chetskeen and Katkeen. Tichkeen? Like the Rope River? Or? Oh. Uh, here, let me show you. Let me show you. Uh, one second. Oops. Try this one. So we're going to talk for a sec about. Um, compound nouns and cling it and how it works I get that I gotta fix a couple things up here for a second oh, yeah, that'll work. so when we talk about compound nouns and cling it there's a couple of patterns that sort of emerge so let me so for example, you've got bot, and then you've got heen, right? So bot on its own is sakai, heen is river or water. And if you're going to combine them into a place name, you're going to end up with katheeni, right? So this is what happens. It's very common for everything except for the last word to get smushed up and to go short and low. So that's pretty often what's going to happen with the word. So the, these vowels are going to, there's some contracting that occurs and some other stuff that happens. So you end up with katheeni. So a similar example, teach plus heen. So teach is a dog salmon, and so you're going to end up with tichini. So this is what happens when things smash down into a single word. This is a very similar process you'll see that happens um, with uh, names, clans, things like that. Is it words for things, you know, the names of things, uh, whether we're talking about like somebody's Tlingit name or just like, what do we call this thing? Um, this is a pattern that you're going to see pretty often. There is some things that, um, that I think become kind of interesting, right? So the other thing is we're also getting the addition of this, the letter I is popping up on here, right? So we're going to get this one as well. So this one goes through actually a couple of different steps, which is pretty interesting. Okay, so let me walk you through the steps that, that happen here. So one is when things become a compound, they become a single word, they go through this sort of contracting of the vowels. They tend to go short and low. And low. But there's this other thing that happens when you put something on the end of a word that ends with a single vowel, it will often push that vowel to go long and low. So this is this kind of a bit of an advanced thing. So for example, uh, if you have hit and then you make that into my house, it becomes ach hiti. So there's a set of rules that get enacted to get us to how do we put this possessive marker on there? Uh, and then you could have something like te. Let me use this thing. And then 
this has a, a sort of a different set of rules. So it goes ach te ye. So that pushes this te long and low. It changes that vowel. This is something that does happen in Klinget. So when you have te plus a, it seems to me this goes into this kind of realm. But then when it goes to contract, so like sort of like once you attach something to this short high vowel, it pushes it long and low. But then when the A vowel, E-I, contracts, it often contracts to an A. It switches the vowel. So then this one goes through a double change, and you end up with tekhayi, which is a rocky point. Uh, so there, there's just interesting things that happen when we start, as we look at, like, what do we do with these place names? We do a lot of things. One is we try to bring them back to use. And I really like the idea. Um, Richard Karstensen is a scholar here in Juneau, and he's really pushing for like, stop using the names of these white guys who have their names all over the place. Nothing against anybody who's white, nothing against anybody who's a guy, but like we don't need 50 things named after this single person who's never even been here. All these things have names already. And one of the ideas is, and there's particular places, you go to particular places, there's things named after certain people. Um, but instead to say like, well, let's actually restore these Schengit place names. We could start using them. So within the language learning community, we can start saying things. Oh yeah, let's go to Wushikluhuhin, Kachtakuhuhin, Kachtakuhuhin day. Right, all, all these different things, you can use these. The other thing is we can continue to look at them to see what can these names teach us about how the language works? How can we continue to go in and take a look at them and continue to learn how the language functions? Then we can also see like, what do these show us about the relationships with people and places? Kahonish said, when something strange happens in a place, they'll name that place after Raven. So then you'll see a whole bunch of places, Yeh, something like we go, just go back to this place name document and, and we'll start to see it. I gotta find where I had that open. So here's Raven's porpoise stream, Yesh Chi Jihin. Uh, so you'll see a whole bunch of Raven stuff in here. So as you just keep going through these and, and looking at them, like, you know, and, and there's different projects that are going on about helping us to put these names back on the land. And it's an important thing, it's an important process. Um, and then we just, we can keep looking for, here's, Ch'ak, a ravine, related to the word ch'ak between two things. Um, and we'll just find these little things that we've been sort of looking at, in between, under, on top of, uh, stuff like that. Okay. So for this next hour, I thought we'd do a couple of things. One is we'll look at a few more things with this direction and location with this Kanalzak, or if you're from the interior, Kalzak, who's going to help us with some of these concepts. Then we'll look at um, a few more things, and there's there's lists of these, and you can part of the work of learning a language is memorizing a whole bunch of stuff. That's that's one of the harder parts, I think, because you just got to repetition, repetition, find these ways to internalize these concepts. Then we're going to shift and we're going to look at talk, uh, then we'll have our closing conversation for the evening. Tomorrow, we'll probably be done with the direction and location. We want to look at how to, how to use a possessive suffix, how to talk about kinship a little bit, and we'll just sort of see what other questions folks might have and start to wrap up the lesson part of it. Um, 
So as we think of these things, um, everybody just say the name of this thing right here. Kanatsak. Or Katsak. Katsak. And the name of this thing. Nadak. 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 Okay. Nadak Shakabu we canatsak. Nadak Shakabu So there's these parts to this sentence, right? So Nadak table Shakabu. It is in front of we canatsak. The canatsak is in front of the Nadak. Shuka is in front of, wo is is or are at. So I'm not supposed to this can go somewhere else. Nadak e gu we kanatsak. Nadak te gu we kanatsak. Ben Chish. So now we have uh, what has changed here is e gu. We have ache, which is behind, and then this same suffix uh, that's on there. So, um, nadak teku. Nadak teku. Nadak kabu we kanal sak. Nadak kabu we kanal sak. So the part that's changed here is kabu. So again, in blue, we have the base. In green, we have the suffix, a base and a suffix, a base and a suffix, right? Kabu, on, so now it's on the table. Nadak tayi wu we kanatsak. Tayi is beneath, and then there's the wo right on there. So now those none of those have a verb, right? So this is just saying where it is. But if you want to have a verb, it's going to be running, standing, walking, anything, any kind of verb, eating, whatever. You're gonna to have to switch the suffix a little bit. Because you could say nadakhanu next to the table. But in this case, um nadak han han we kanatsak. So han is the verb that means uh, a single thing or person, they are standing. Hunt is next to. Okay. Now we're going to use a, a verb where something is now it's going to move. Nadak de ya nagut we kanatsak. So we get nadak de. Nadak de. Right. So it's going to go high, low, high, low. Right. It is they or, you know, they are walking. A singular person or thing is walking. So now the day will turn to dach and it's going to be going away from. Nadak dach yanagut we Na da da ya na good we can ask. Day da day Okay, so da is around. And now the verb goes from yanagut to yanashikh. 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 
If you're from Yakutat, it's Yanashkich. So there's an extra X right there. The verb root is Chich. But for a lot of Klingit, the first X just gets contracted. It just, it just happens. So now it's running. Okay. So we, we did a few of these things. There's a couple other things you can check out here. The slide shows up on our class, um, on our workshop webpage. Uh, and you could check out these other things that show like in a box, under a box, um, with an apple, and then an owl. And uh, now it's flying around. So, uh, but we're going to skip ahead a little bit. Okay, you can go, you can go review those things. So we did relative to the speaker. Ya, he, we, you, ha. Those five senses of direction. Then we got a whole bunch of these things that are these two objects around, above, below, under, inside, on, you know, a whole bunch of these things, including some that are just sort of sometimes challenging concepts. But now the third one is these fixed points in the Schengen universe. So we're going to talk about some of these. And again, there's whole lists of these things. So we'll cover a few. And then there's lists out there to go and to look for, memorize, learn. You'll find that some are, are very common. And then there's some that are maybe a bit more unusual. And then we're gonna look at the talk uh, story and we're gonna show like how to start to analyze some of the stories so that we can work more closely with them. Uh, ideally, you'll be able to tell these stories. And then you'll also be able to just really sort of know what every single word is basically doing. So here's uh, just some nouns. Uh, we'll go through these one at a time. I'll, I'll say it in Klingit, you guys repeat it, then I'll tell you in English what it is. We'll start up here. Uh, let me make this, make this bigger. Khats. Khats. So that's the sky. It's also light blue color. Kepleti. Hey, That's a seagull. Goose. Goose. Cloud. Pagan. Pagan. Sun. Shaw. 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 Mountain. Pagan Kusi. Pagan Kusi. That is a beam of light that shines through the clouds. That literally means below the foot of the sun. Tan. 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 Sea lion. Each. 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 A reef or a rock that is submerged and the tide moves up and down. Niche. 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 Uh, niche is the. Right there, right there, right there. Heen. Heen. I see why you made my, my first game all I want. Yeah, great. Heen is a river. Water. Hot. Hot. It's a fish. Askatu. 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 The forest. Gan Khahadi. Gan Khahadi. It's the covering for the smoke hole. Gan Ka. Gan Ka. That's the smoke hole. Kutia. Kutia. It's a totem pole. Hit. 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 It's a house. Kahat. Kahat. It's a door. Kahat. Yak. Yak. It's a canoe. H. H. That's the ocean. Sow. Sow. Dungeness. It'd actually be in the water, hanging out on the land. 
Te. Te. That's a rock. So just sort of getting our bearings on where these things are. This is the ocean. This is the land. This is the inland. Okay. So in terms of how these things relate to direction, location. Let's start with uh, being in the woods. Askatuyik. 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 So then let's say someone goes from the inland. And really by the inland, we just mean away from the ocean. From away from the ocean, from the inland towards the ocean, there's two ways to say this. Ek. 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 So that is, and that's also how you would refer to the location of the beach if you're up in the inland. Okay. If that person uh, then got into a boat and they went out to sea from the shore, that location is dark. 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 If this boat, well, this person, maybe they got out, and they're going back to the shore, going to the shore from the ocean, from out on the ocean, that's yun. 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 Then if they kept walking and they went inland away from the ocean, that is dark. 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 So there's a few of these other ones. Uh, the key is up above. The yaw is across a body of water. The key is way out to sea. And then there's a few others like is the base of something. Naki is upriver or north. Ikki is downriver or south. Um, there's one similar to like ik, dak, dak, yan, where which one you use depends on where you're at. Same with inside of a building. So if you are inside the building, Say inside of a building. Nay. Nay. So if you are inside of a building, that's how you talk about inside of a building. If you're outside of the building, to say inside the building, you'd say ye. 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 And if you're also inside to talk about outside, gone, 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 gone. gone. So when we're in uh, Hawaii and we're learning how direction works in Hawaiian, they had a similar thing. So you go uh, Mauka or Makai, so you go upland or to the water. And then there was a core part of the directions. So if we were to give directions in Tlingit, we would talk about going dak or ik. And then from there, like this was a much bigger thing than east and west. And, and same with north and south. Like if you do have two islands and they have the same name, one might be called Naki something, and one might be called Ikki something. So the north one and the south one, that's pretty common. But in terms of, um, instead of saying west, a no. long time ago, at some point you're, you're either going ik, no. dak. You're either going to go towards the ocean or you're going to go past it. So it was not really about using cardinal directions to get to places. But then when we talked about, like let's say this was a location. Let's say this was deshu. And then you go, you might say ik de naku. So then you would maybe name the name a place and say go towards that place. 
and that's how you take care of maybe east west and stuff like that but yeah it, it's kind of interesting to think about like how that stuff works uh, because at the center of the directional thing it's really the ocean and then um, there's quite a few more concepts tied into all of this stuff right we're just sort of dabbling but i do want to talk about these two dark dark they are opposite concepts okay and they also have multiple meanings so dark is out to sea from the shore dark is also from the shadows out into the open so if there's like a big meadow and you go from the woods out into this meadow that's dark that's song we sung earlier cha da cha da sa dark yay yis and nay everything you brought out so this is sometimes used let's say if you're bringing out the at u of the clan our ancestors are going to come out we're going to emerge it also means for precipitation to fall. See you, dark husitan. It's also for something to go onto the fire. Dark is for things to go from the ocean up to the inland. And including dakka, dakka shingit, inland shingit people. It also could mean going from that meadow into the woods, from the open into the shadows, or off of fire. So these are the concepts that you'll see. Uh, this And then this slideshow goes through a whole bunch of other stuff too. Like we start sort of looking at parts of speech. We start looking at uh, a bunch of nouns that you're going to see in place names. So uh, this whole slideshow is up there. But I want to kind of stop and then move on to something else, unless you folks have any questions. Ka'une, ah. is there a common thread between the various meanings of dock and dock? I, I think so. I mean, and that, so there's a bunch of stuff that you can sort of start to wonder, because going out to sea and then emerging from the shadows and then precipitation falling and going on to fire. Like those are all the same, it's kind of the same concept in Shingit. Um, and then they are used quite a bit to say like to emerge, something that's emerging. And then this is something, you know, there's also some larger spiritual concepts that are at play here. So sometimes when people, um, pass away, I might say they went inland. That's why people say they walked into the forest. Because could also mean to go into the woods. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're tied to these very large concepts that are really interesting to think about and how these are and think it similar concepts and how they work. So uh, birth, well, birth is interesting because there's two ways to say, like, like you say, I was born. I could say, and I am an object in that, right? The birthing happened to me. I could also say, I birthed. I was active. I was an active participant. And it's really interesting because to exist, you could say I exist. You could also also say I am living. So, um, but just in terms of dark uh, yeah, that's usually like some of these concepts are tied to like really unknown things. The shadows can be kind of scary sometimes in Klingit. Um and so kudzeti uh, at is sometimes uh, called kustin at. Kustin is related to kudzati, uh, and it's an adjective. It means giant or monstrous. 
like a long time ago, there were these things that did exist. Kustinak, a giant octopus. Kustin uh, Kutzin, a giant rat. Uh, and these things, Kustin Sisk, a giant owl. And we've got stories of these things. Um, yeah, so I mean, good questions. Oh, okay, Ilchish, for the clarification. Kustin, to dwell somewhere. Okay. I have a question, um, it's kind of in relation of like, um, I guess not like something inland kind of. Um, we have a story here um, about like sick people that live in the woods that like mess with you while you're hunting. Is there any like tales or stories of that like in uh, Clinket? It's usually a land otter and um they might come and like take you or play tricks on you um there are certainly other things that are out there there's a lot of stories about unknown things strange things that happen uh there's certainly stories about um the icht the spirit the medicine people and like some of the things that they were able to do and see and know um, there was a river and the, the Icht said, uh, nobody gets salmon from the river this year. And the people didn't listen. I think they did for a while, but then they just started being like, well, but the salmon are right here in the river. So let's just get them. And everybody died off. And I guess if you go to that place now, um, Kaku Anish was telling me about that as well. He told me the story of it. And when he got done, he was telling me, um, he was talking to his dad. He said, well, I'm go hunting over here at this river. His dad's like, all right. So he went hunting and he came back and his dad said, well, how'd that go? He says, well, we didn't see anything. I was like, oh yeah. He's like, no, no, like nothing. Like there's no, no birds. You don't hear any birds singing. There's no bugs. Nothing existed there. And his dad told him that story. So yeah, this Icht said, don't get any salmon out of the river and people didn't listen to everything. Everything died off there. Now nothing lives there. So he said to his dad, uh, well, why didn't you tell me when I said I was going hunting? And his dad said, you didn't ask. So <laughs> but yeah, there are there are stories about things like a Kushtaka. There's a whole bunch of stories of that. Um, they get a little bit they whistle at you. It's a whole bunch of this pretty spooky stuff sometimes. To, just to add to that too, the whistle and uh, they can shape shift and they'll have trouble walking because their legs aren't because they're otter people. So their legs, they look like somebody you know and they talk to you crudely. There's those stories I've heard too, and they're pretty. For that, those are really scary. Yeah, like like sometimes, I think they put a thought in your mind. So if carry tobacco or copper, they don't like those yeah fart they don't like farting uh that's also save some people urine they don't like uh, that type of yeah strong smells like yeah if you had to pee or something you know i mean it's either that or get kidnapped by these things you know so it's like couldn't hold it in because i couldn't go get taken but it's it's wild because they'll say wusanich and that sure sounds similar to wusanich but that that's the verb for when they come and take you Either the kushta will come and get you. I think they're lonely for people. And so they come and they just try to take people because they they like to be with them. So it's a, and it's a complicated relationship. And we were talking about this uh, earlier this year in a language class because we started just calling them scary stories. And it's something more complicated than that because like let's say a long time ago we're at Shlinget Village and uh, someone goes missing. You go out in there, yak uh, so they never come back. They, they get lost. And everybody's getting worried. Uh, 
Ja, hachoni, kech kuchu de kuch. So they'll go see the icht, and they'll say, help us, our, our friend never came back, but pay them. You gotta pay the icht. And the icht would do a hastakhanuku, hastakhasaku atah. They would do their ceremony. I don't know how it goes. Hasaku, ya kanakhre kautle khitsa, ya hasti shakhawu. Ya hasti da'it tsu. Ulichai, <laughs> Yeah, has a cow again. Gustrone, yeah. Has a dog. A cow away, we ache. Has to hunt to a good. Gush is is a coo. One can is canaho cook, canaho hook. Jacone, I see you, darkness tongue. You cut canaho with the sneak. Wait a yak away. Did the Nikaya yak? A joy has to da it, cash has a oozen. Gosh has to conne a ya, a daddy has to conne, shoo the cut has to da it has a ooze. It's ark, it's ark, a tin noah has to hate to has our shayer. Ya conahoic, a dane has shouts a ya. Kayan has a winny. Well, a daddy has you a nay, it conugu. Good kindy, a ya, kindy with the clean. As the arnie da, ye has cook what ye has a good satin. Kushta, Kanahoe, wish to work a naya has cook what knock. An day has our screen. So a uh, long time ago, we had the Icht, the medicine people. And uh, they, they didn't comb their hair. Their hair was always knotted up and they, they didn't wash themselves. And I think the reason that I think that is, I, I have a friend who's Lakota. And I used to go to ceremony with him. His grandpa was a medicine person. And he would say, um, mm -hmm. The spirits, the yake, they say they don't like the smell of people. So they would burn sage and stuff to clear the air so that those spirits could come in. And when they came in, it's like if uh, those of you in Juno right now, you probably don't know what this is like anymore. But if the weather was really dry for like just really dry for a long stretch, when it first rains, you can really smell the, the earth. And that's what the, the yake smells like when they come near you, you could just it smells like it just started raining, you know. And uh, but if the Icht was going to do a ceremony, they would wash their whole body. And they had a comb that was made out of bone. And they would comb their hair out like that and really straighten it out. And they would start their ceremonies, a whole bunch of different things they knew how to do. Amazing stuff. But someone once told me, like, if, if you could have, like, a drone or something or somebody just flew up above the village while the Icht was doing their ceremonies you would have seen that there were Kushta land otters in a circle in the village looking in to see what was going on and that's they're the ones that they would talk to to see where where the people were and the Kushta would tell them and so uh and he, there's even a story like the so the Icht talked to the Kushta and the Kushta like, yeah, they're over here on this beach. We're trying to get them. And so they'd go and, and, and you know, have to rescue them because these Kushta are, they'll start whistling. And then uh, if you don't pay attention to them, they'll start throwing like pine cones at you. And if you don't pay attention to them, they'll start crying. And uh, it's, it's pretty wild stuff. A whole series of stories. Some people don't like to hear them. Some people like to hear them. Uh, I'll just touch on them. You, 
someday there'll maybe be a book of them but i'm sure we'll all be too scared to write that book but i i know they wanted to wanted to do a book about kushtaka and about the ikht because that connection is really close and um there are a few stories out there uh sam johnston told us about uh, kushta she they have a song that someone heard one time i was singing it under a rock uh george davis told a story about uh this young couple and the baby it's pretty scary and then uh i'm sure there's a whole bunch that haven't been translated yet as well uh, but if you're out there hiking in the woods just pack some tobacco something funny happens you know just keep it near you and and just show it show it to them try and keep yourself mentally strong and i'll pitch the wood yeah that's what i heard anyways and then you can overcome it but um um yeah. so uh Oh, yadi gak um pot the baby the baby crying sound that the crows make at night. So I've heard that when you're camping, it's really important, especially if you're a mom, not to fall for that. Yeah, right. And so the, these things, and like, so in Shingit, uh, Shakaish is pointing out in the chat, like, it's important to know how to talk to animals as well. So um, before you go in the woods, there's just some things you could say, and there's different ways you could say it. I would probably say, let me tell you who you're talking to and go into the woods, the big brown ones. They're, they're the ones, they're the bosses. That's their house. So you talk to them because you're just letting them know what's going on. Hasdiyakhayakhakhtusyekhakhtustii. <laughs> Um, so there's just some certain things you usually touch on, you know, calling them your ancestors sometimes. You can also add Kwani to the name of the thing. If you're out in the woods, you don't say the name of the brown bear. You can call it Yatsinate, is a, a living thing. Uh, and you can also say the big thing is maybe around us and then uh you could say things like we're we're gonna come into your home we're gonna look for food maybe medicine we're gonna do the things that our ancient people did and we don't want to see you so forgive us but you talk to and you sort of announce yourself and so this is uh a cultural practice of, of Shingit. It's like living next to all these different things and really trying to be in balance with all these different things. Don't laugh at animals. Don't make fun of them. Don't point at them. Uh, all these different things uh, about uh, the world that we live in. It's bigger than us. We're just this little part of it. And that's a conflicting value, I think, with um, some of the folks who, who came and, and think they're, they're in command of everything, right? Like we were put in command of, of everything in the world. And, and you know, and, and people can think differently. 
so uh, this this is why I mean there's lots of stories that exist about when things go wrong but a lot of it comes down to like just give respect to everything everything has a spirit give respect to everything and then um, talk to things you know and they, these are things that uh, some people had a hard time with when they'd hear how how we lived but it it's worked here for ten thousand years so probably work for another ten thousand years um yeah okay cheese it's good conversation okay okay cheese and uh yeah there's plenty plenty kind of uh stories out there as well about all these different kinds of things so let's uh look for a little bit about um different ways to look at these stories. So going back, um, uh, just the, the work she did to record these, Kahani, Kuch, this whole group of people that uh, thought about getting these big old recorders and hauling them around. And so here's one that was recorded uh, in Angun, uh, outside of a basketball game that was going on. This is from Sha Da So from the mouth of Sha Da Sha Da Kwe Kakwe Dehusatiyan Dakwe Diyeti Robert Zuba if you do a sock lingit enach Ah Kwe Kudz Kudzati eighteen ninety three in nineteen seventy four Hanakhugud Shkalnik tsate Kanakhoi ausaku Ya shut the honey who sati and so Duto was a cook on a hoi a dead key as ausaku has costi yakaha yukatangi Kanakhoi a two yak a do yukatangi or hoahi a joy a dart a ya a gartil rain ya yaki so this is uh, Robert Zuboff. His thinked name was Shaw Dog, uh, which means around, residing around the mountain. So old Thinket village. He was Kukwedi, Dakwedi Yadi, and uh, he was from Angoon. Born quite a while back, passed away quite a while back to master, master storyteller. So this uh, story is called Tag, uh, which is the name for mosquito. It means the one that bites. And uh, it's recorded by Nora Dauenhauer. And um, when we take a look at this, <laughs> we're going to look at a few things. I don't know. I hear something as well. <laughs> I do so a keep. Because in is is not muted. Ah, good I'll try. Here we go. <laughs> uh, 
yeah so it's fun we tell the stories then there's a bit of a noise in the background um so what we're going to do is we're going to look at this line by line and we won't make it through the whole thing um and also i haven't finished this i started working on this idea in 2007 so um you know maybe it'll be finished by 2028 be my prediction but we'll see but the idea here is there there is a story i'll post the audio for the whole thing talk uh, in its entirety you can read along uh this is published in a book called hashuka which you should buy you can also i'll put the chapter up there um and you know if you get, if you look around the Schengen curriculum folder you could probably find everything that's ever been published in Schengen. Uh, I have gotten letters from lawyers and linguists about how I share things. Some people don't like it, but you know what? It's not their language. So um, I'm gonna set an auto response up for people who, I'll probably get myself in trouble. I'm gonna set up an auto response and say, um, I have forwarded your email to my ancestors they will be in touch with you when they feel like it. But, you know, the language belongs to everybody. It's for the learners, it's for the users, it's for our grandkids, it's from our ancestors. It's not really up to other people to say, especially if, if they're not, not born here, they're not Anyetki. They're gonna tell us what to do with our language. I get a little bit, I get a little bit grumpy about that. If I just keep going, open access, it's there, go find it. If they send me some kind of letter, I'll try and work around them. So what we'll do is, so we'll see something like this with a little- The box has been opened, so it's been released for us to use it. What? Yeah, what? Goodness, cheesh. Uh, I forgot to hit the share sound button. So I think uh, I'll play this and you should be able to hear it. So that we got to hear it twice, and we'll look at the sentence. Can I get a volunteer to read it? We just heard him say that. So can I get a volunteer to read it? You don't have to sound exactly like him, but you know, try and catch. Ah, cook. Owe, where a yagu yit. Guide you do sagun. A yitawe at naha kuch. A skewo. Sheesh. Ah, are there. Are there parts in here that you folks are recognizing? You want to help us to see? What about so the owe part, like, you know. Um, it usually means that is, but a lot of times when it's used in speaking and oratory, it's that it's uh, it means I'm gonna do I'm talking. It might mean that we're separating these two concepts. Um, so sometimes it's sort of like a comma. Sometimes it's sort of like a hey, you know. So it has lots of things. What about this part? Wait, Somebody tell us what that is. In my, that in my boat? Yes. So that, ach, uh, yagu, my boat, yikt. So there's one of those yik things uh -oh, with a T on it, right? Hey, look, it's got a suffix right on. Guide, you just It was called guide. It was called guide, right? So we go, you. You do a song, um, as it is called, you do sagen, it used to be called. So once we use the sagen, the person listening is going to assume uh, that the person has passed away, or in this case, the boat is gone. I would go around in it. Yep. 
So here we have a yikt. So this is something that Shingit does a lot. He said his boat. Most things, if from there, once we hear the it's thing, that's what the uh is doing. It's a non-human third person. That's referring back to the boat. Shingit just loves mm -hmm. to do stuff like that. It's like, okay, there's this boat. It, 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 it. And it just keeps saying it, right? At nachakuch. What this, there's two ways to translate this verb. I always go around, or I used to always go around. I, I see them used just like this to talk about something that used to happen. There's another way to do it, to say it used to, but doesn't anymore. But, um, yeah, so this uh, is the verb root. There's some other things going on there. The na and the ch are combining to say happens all the time. There's a whole bunch of verbs that have something like this. Ye na teach. It's always that way. Uh, in this case, um, you could also say I always walk around. Right? And then say that's a askewu saining. Yeah, away saining, right? So askewu saining. So then uh, the next phase is to sort of kind of color code the thing and start to pull some things apart just so that we can look at them as learners. Um, and so what I recommend with these stories is sort of listen to the whole thing read it listen to it again then start to sort of pull the pieces apart so you could see them the idea is to be able to put it back together like when we were young my dad he was a um, he was a, a technician for a telephone company it, it was called rca and then it became um oh what was it after that i forget then it became AT&T. I can't remember what the middle one was. It was uh, Ma, Bell, Ma Bell was around for a long time. Yeah, it was, an, it was an Anchorage, though. Alaskam? Alaskam. Yeah, way. Goodness. There you go. And he would just bring home, like, elect equipment, like a phone or something, a clock. And he would have us take it apart. And then we would get a bonus, like some kind of special treat if we could put it back together and it worked. And so that's a lot of what we're doing with the language is we're sometimes pulling it apart, see what's there, so we can learn how to do this stuff ourselves. One more thing I'll point out, this kind of interesting little technicality. You do a sock or ye do a sock. Technically, if the name comes first, right before the verb, we should have you. If the name is separated from the verb, either it's put after the verb, or you have a bunch of stuff in between the name, um, then it will switch to ye. So like a funky, like little fine detail thing. And so I should be saying, or so like it's just it's an interesting thing you'll see it with a couple other verbs the ye and the you and how those things are being used and then we have uh so just sort of spotting um the verb spotting the verb root and you can what this also does is there's another line that teases it out so you can see the classifier it's a zero classifier that's a zero classifier. And just looking, what are these verbs doing? How can we sort of keep learning more about them as we do our slow crawl through the story? Okay, we'll do one more. I think we'll run out of time. <laughs> Can I get a reader? Awe ye cut to a sock, shingit, chainach, shadach. Okay, 
Sheesh. And so there's Owe. So he's just sort of starting his, you know, if we're doing line by line translation, like, well, you don't have to have that as like that is every time, right? But then we then we see it switch. It went from you to ye right there. Ye chatu sak. I am called. Shingit enach in shingit shadach. So then you know. So that's what the the parts are here. Oh, I didn't let anybody translate. I just did it. Oops. Um, so then we can go through and sort of look. So this is doing some color coding. This is pulling it apart. And then this is doing a bit of a chunk by chunk translation. And there are times when we do something like this, that it's going to look a little different than what you would translate it as. Just to show you, like, here's, you're going to learn, you got to learn how to become translators. I think most people who have become, it seems like ones who have become really good translators have also become really good speakers. I don't, I don't know. Um, and then it also just allows us to sort of see these because they go by very fast. And he is a well-paced Klingit speaker. There's other ones who are so fast that you just, you, you just, you know. So Sunday we're pulling it apart, putting it back together. Can I get a reader? Awe ya ya ach say nach awe awe hat wu ho ki wen chagu ai chak wuna. Okay. So here's the awe. And so you'll see speakers who they do these, we call them false starts. They'll say the word, then they'll say it again. Somebody tell me what about this part. Ya ach say nach awe. Going on there. It's like his name's from or something? No. So you'd say uh dach oh wait, you would you would hear dach in there somewhere. But you're on the right track. So yeah, the nach one is through. Ach sa yinach through my name. So sa is a name. Ach sa yi is the possessed. You know, it's a noun that has been possessed. Ach sa yi nach. So for Tlingit, when you possess something, the thing that gets possessed gains a suffix, right? So in English, you say lance, cup, lances, cup. If that was Tlingit grammar, you'd say lance, cup, lance, cups. So the possessive marker goes on to the thing. You can have a possessive marker and a suffix. So you can have multiple suffixes on a noun, but they do go in a certain order. So that's where you get sa yi nach through my name. What about a wechatu uh git wain is somebody's name. I'll give you guys that. What about the other part? Gitwain, he called to me. He he summoned me, right? He so this wuchuch, yeah, it means to call something over to summon it. So he he call he summoned me over through my name. It's a very shlingit tundutani concept, right? And chagu ai chagu na. What do we got there? He died long ago. Yeah. Chaku ai, the one of long ago. Chaku na. So this is a time marker. Chaku. 
It means long ago. In some cases, it could mean for a long time. It's one of these things where I would say meaning number one, long time ago. But in some cases, for a long time. So then when we tease that apart, we can sort of see through my name, Gitwain called me over. And so again, just sort of seeing these, this chuch verb and and just sort of as we, we can go look those up and try and learn more about the individual verbs. We see here it's a ya, so it's still a zero group classifier, but it switches to ya because it did happen. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff we can sort of tease out through here uh, with this big, wonderful story. It's about five or six minutes in terms of how long it is. On the page, I, I think it's maybe 10 pages or so, 12. But then if we just do this slow crawl through, we start to really see these pieces. And so what can we do with this story? We can continue to like learn so much in this story. We can learn the story itself so that we could tell it in English. Then we can start, you know, the, one of the things that I started doing with stories is I started trying to tell it in Shingit but the way I would do it is I would go one sentence at a time and say it and sing it and then translate it. Just like, it's a combination of memorization and also just learning how to say these particular things. Then I just sort of started trying to just only tell them and sing it. And then there's, I would go back to the story and sort of find things. I was like, oh yeah, I forgot this part. Sometimes I would forget whole chunks. And sometimes I would say some things just a little bit incorrectly, right? Um, but these stories are wonderful. So uh, I'll post some things uh, tonight. I'll get caught up on the postings and uh, I'll include uh, the printed version of this story, the audio of this story and this slideshow. I, I think I made it about halfway through, maybe, maybe a fourth of the way through the story, maybe a third just sort of trying to do this, like to you, pulling it all apart so that we can see all the pieces that are in there. Yeah, So tomorrow I'll, I'll make sure I go get some things for land acknowledgements and talk about how to do that in Shingit. Uh, we'll probably just look at this talk uh, again, and then we'll see if you folks have any things you want to learn. We'll probably learn about the possessive suffix. It's a little bit tricky. I think it's a pretty fun thing to learn how to do. And then um, we'll see where we're at from there. Gunchi Shuhan, Kadein Shilsa, Yerhana, Yewushki Christine. I'm so Okay. <laughs> <laughs>